I have a, a long and not always happy association uh, as a, a LGBTI human rights advocate with local government. Um, when I, well, only a couple of months after I came out of university, I got involved in a, in a gay law reform group in Tasmania. Some of you might remember uh, Tasmania was the last state to decriminalise homosexuality and there was a maximum penalty of 21 years in jail. We thought that wasn't such a good idea. <laughs> and so we set up a little stall at Salamanca Market in Hobart, which those of you who've been to Hobart will, may, may have, have visited. And that market is controlled by the Hobart City Council. And when the council found out that we had a stall there, we passed a motion banning the stall, saying that there was no place for homosexuals in its family market. It ordered the police to come in and arrest us, and it imposed lifetime bans from the market on anyone who was arrested. It went on to ban any pink triangles, or male and female symbols, or the words lesbian gay, in the market area. And, and a petition. And because I was found in possession of a gay law reform petition, and because I was behind the store, I was arrested, not once, but four times. A pretty scary thing for a university history undergraduate who'd only just come out and grew up on a dairy farm. We pleaded with the Hobart City Council to reverse its position, but it wouldn't. And so we protested, week in, week out, until the protests grew so large and the embarrassment so great that the council gave in, and we were allowed to have our store back. It was a really awful time, but a really inspiring time too, because that was really the launching pad for the campaign to decriminalise homosexuality in Tasmania, and gave us a hope that however bad things were, they would and that we could, with our own hearts and hands, grasp equality. Now, as you'd all be aware, of course, Tasmania changed. Those laws disappeared. And we have some really good human rights laws now. And along with that change came changes at the Hobart City Council. Not long after decriminalisation, it set up an LGBTI uh, committee to liaise with council about LGBTI issues in the Hobart area. And on the 20th anniversary of them sending in the police to arrest us all, the council issued an apology through a civic reception in the lovely town hall boardroom. The mayor apologised for what had happened and announced that the council would fund a public artwork commemorating those events. It was the first apology for the repression of LGBTI human rights in Australia. And it was the first public artwork commemorating a successful struggle. And it's there in Salamanca Place, right now, underlit by little pink lights. <laughs> it's really touching messages to the Tasmanian people. Reminder that profound change is possible. And that's why I tell you that story, because I want to remind you that profound change is possible. And I want to talk about how that change happens. In Tasmania, it was because, fundamentally, beyond everything else, we went out and we talked to anyone who would listen about our personal stories, about why <coughs> exclusion from the community and the families of which, which shaped us was so bitterly painful. And by doing that, we were able to shift hearts and minds in an entire community. <coughs> we're doing the same today with marriage equality. You all know the issue, you've seen 
We've talked about it a hundred times. People who aren't in heterosexual relationships can marry. And there's a lot of heat about that issue, a lot of discussion just in the last couple of days. We've seen heated debate about whether Telstra supports marriage equality and whether the church, Catholic Church influenced that and whatever else. But always beneath that froth and bubble, there are at any one time across Australia hundreds of people who are talking to their work colleagues and their friends and their family members about why marriage equality matters to them. And it is that which is making ultimately win that form, be it uh, through a public vote, through a plebiscite, which hope doesn't happen, or through a voting parliament, which would be the better course. And personal stories are working in local government as well. Almost uh, 50, I think just over 40 local governments in Australia have passed motions in support of marriage equality. Mostly in Victoria uh, and Tasmania and New South Wales. Hopefully soon as well in South Australia, Western Australia and Queensland. And those motions have had a really direct and dramatic impact on the attitudes of local impacts. And the best example, of course, is probably Geelong, where the local Liberal MP, Sir Henderson, came out in support of marriage equality, thanks to voices in her community speaking up in favour, and to the institutions in her community, such as the Zerong City Council, coming out in support. And I'd like to take this opportunity to thank Jan, who has driven this across the nation, driven this campaign to get local government to support marriage more, more than anyone else. come to write this chapter of the marriage equality history. The chapter about local government involvement. They were the same more than anyone else. It was councillor I said before that local that um, personal stories make no difference. So I'll finish with an example. In twenty fourteen, in the end of twenty fourteen the motion was put to the Harvard City Council, the same council that it had us all arrested all those years ago, to support marriage equality. And like I said, the councils changed. And there was a majority of councillors that seemed to were going to support that. But there seemed to be several councillors who, who were unhappy with your idea. And you can probably, you probably know the reasons that put forward for this. It's not council business. Um, We've got so many other things to deal with. Uh, and the responses to that, um, that I and others gave, are the responses that, that have worked in other places. Responses such as, it's about inclusion. Every council, including the Hobart City Council, has an inclusion policy. And it's easy to link marriage equality to inclusion. If you can't be a part of or have a choice to be a part of such a core social institution, social and legal institution as marriage. That reinforces exclusion, uh, your exclusion from family and community and the It's a crucial point. But still, some of those councillors were a bit conflicted. So what the Lord Mayor did was that she asked us and those who were against marriage equality to come in and actually address the council directly. And uh, I got a bit of a shock when I got there because there was probably a dozen marriage equality supporters who were there. And there was about 60 or 70 members of a local fundamentalist church who had suddenly come. And they all had the same clothes. They all had a uniform. Uh, <laughs> they had their church name. And, and I've never seen that before. And they all sat right there and they were, maybe it's just me, but I felt a little bit intimidating. Um, and they gave their representations and they made their case, and you've heard that case, I won't go into it. But then, from our side, spoke Deirdre Murray, who is the mother of two children, 
She lives in South Tasmania with her partner, who is, a, I think, the highest ranking officer in the army in Tasmania. Uh, she's Catholic. Uh, and she's from a farming background, and she's still in farming. And she talked about what marriage equality meant to her, and what it meant to her kids. What it meant to them to be able to feel that they were just like everyone else. And the counsellors didn't say anything. But Fifteen minutes later, they were in that council chamber. They all got up, one after the other, and said, I will vote for this. Every single one. And it was unanimous. First time I can remember the whole that city council voted for anything. <laughs> and that was the same council that threw me in prison because they had a petition for decriminalisation. You've heard a lot of really good advice today about how to make your workplaces and your councillors and your councils and your municipalities safer places for LGBT. But in the end, from my point of view, there's one thing that matters more than anything else, and that is the power of personal stories to change hearts and lives. Thank you. <laughs>